forms of business organization okay so you're done with secondary school you're done with university and you want to start up your business how best can you organize the business or let's look at the various businesses you see you have a, a tailor around you you have someone selling noodles around you, you have various companies and banks how can people in what ways what are the different ways businesses are organized that's what i'm going to look at in this chapter now we have a diagram showing us the various forms of businesses now we have these are the top of the business then one of the first type is sole proprietorship partnership cooperative society and a limited liability company which is also divided for a level into private and a public limited liability company okay now let's take them one after the other a sole proprietorship or the person involved the sole proprietor is also known as one man business Okay, so this is somebody, the most common kind of business, the one we see around us, someone who owns a kiosk or who owns a business. It's very easy to set up, doesn't require much capital. So you could start with, let's say, 20,000 naira, get a small shop somewhere and start selling biscuits or sells noodles. And this person is always a small retailer. Okay, that's one aspect. Or it could be someone doing a big business. He owns um, a supermarket, but does everything. The capital comes just from himself. He doesn't re rely on any other person for capital. So everything is done by his own self. So that's sole proprietorship or one-man business. Okay, so what are the advantages of sole proprietorship? It requires small capital to establish the one person involved takes all the decision by himself he doesn't need to consult anybody to take a decision he wants to close the business today it's totally his business okay he attends personally to the customers and thus has a close relationship with the customers he determines the location of the business he can spend the proceeds of the business that is the profits from the business anyhow he wants it's easy to establish it can be established in any environment and the profits totally belongs to the owner now what are the disadvantages the capital is usually limited let's say the person just has hundred thousand naira, but there are other opportunities around him that requires let's say he has up to 10 million naira, he can make more profits but because it's just himself he cannot raise that kind of capital okay so the capital is usually limited so because he runs the business himself, he's most likely to make a mistake because he doesn't have a board or several persons that will sit and take the best decisions regarding affairs of the business. Okay, so the unit cost of goods they sell is higher than large business operators. Okay, the sole proprietor, like I mentioned before, may also not have all the expertise required for the day-to-day -day operation of the business. It's most likely going to mismanage the funds of the business. Now let's look at another type, partnership. Partnership is when two more persons come together for the purpose of doing business. Now partnerships are mostly registered by the government and usually requires from 2 to 20 persons. Okay? So these two to twenty persons they contribute money to do this business let's say they require one million naira to do this business and there are just five of them they say okay let's contribute to two hundred thousand naira and we'll share the profits based on our contribution so that means they'll share the profit one is two one is two one is two one but let's say there's just two of them and one person contributes eight hundred thousand naira the other person two hundred thousand naira that means they'll share the profits eight is to two or four is to one the person that contributes higher takes more of the profits now the contribution is not totally in form of money it could also be um personal contribution let's say the person is going to run the business the person that contributes this two hundred thousand will stay every day in the business to run the activity because 
he is involved day to day. The profit share may not be like this. It could also be 1 is to 1 or 50, 50, 50. That's 50 percent to this person, though he contributed lower capital, then 50 percent to the other person that contributes to that more, but is not involved in day to day activity of the business. It all depends on their agreement. Okay, so the advantages of partnership. The capital for doing the business is contributed by all the individuals. There is a diversity of talent among the partners. Sound business decisions are usually made by more than one person. There is usually more com commitment to work. Profits are shared only by the partners. Then secrecy is maintained as partners are not meant to publicize their records of earnings. Business risks and liabilities are shared. More jobs are created. And if you have a dormant partner, that's someone who is not ready to work. The business may not be affected. Unlike sole proprietorship, when the owner of the business is sick, it means that the shop will not be open for that day. So the disadvantages of partnership, the liabilities are usually limitless. Let me explain this. Now, let's say these partners borrow money from one person, let's say they borrow 10 million naira, and at the end of the year, they're not able to recover this 10 million naira. The owner of this money can easily sue these persons involved in a partnership for a particular sum, and they must pay for this money. So the limits to which they bear the loss of the business is unlimited. There's no limits. This person could sue them for 20 million naira and nothing happens. They have to pay for it. But let's say the other type of business are going to look at this limited liability. The liability is limited. So they register the company in the government and their liability is limited to just a particular sum they have agreed. Let's say 1 million naira. So if anything happens to the business, the maximum amount they can pay is one million naira. Even if they borrow hundred million naira from a bank and something happens, the maximum they can pay. And it's not even the individuals, it's a company, the registered company, not the individuals. The company pays one million naira, that's the maximum of the liability they can carry. Okay? So the partners are individuals and not the business is not a legal entity. Now if there's a Another disadvantage of partnership, if there is a disagreement between the partners, it may affect the business. Death of one of the partners may affect or end the business. The decision is slower than in sole proprietorship. Introduction of a new partner may end the business. Okay, so these are the disadvantages of partnership. Now let's look at the cooperative society. That's the third type, cooperative society. So a cooperative society may be defined as an association of individuals with common interests who agree to come together to promote the welfare of members. Now I will explain what this means. But before I do, let me, let me list the types of cooperative societies or examples. We have consumer cooperative we have farmers cooperative and we have the thrift and credit cooperative okay let me explain this instead of having individual farmers who maybe may not be able to buy a tractor now it's easy for all the farmers in a particular state to come together and form a union. In the union they contribute 10,000 10, naira and they now have 10 million naira. With the 10 million naira they can easily buy a tractor and each of them can now share this particular tractor they bought together. So cooperative society based on that explanation may be defined as an association of individuals with common interests. So there's an association and there's a common interest. And the interest is usually to promote the welfare of the members. It could be in form of, let's say, just access to large sum of money. 
let's say at the end of the month all of them contribute 10,000 naira and there are 10 of them therefore they now have 100,000 naira with this 100,000 they can give one person or well, the one person will now have enough money to be able to do an investment okay then the next month another person takes 100,000 naira and that's how they keep rotating the money from one person to another so it benefits the individuals now the first one I mentioned, Consumer Cooperative Society. What they do is they contribute money and use to buy goods at lower rates. Okay, so they buy goods at very low rates and now share it among themselves. It could be bags of rice. They contribute and buy bags of rice. Because they're buying in bulk, they now get such cheaper rates and now share it among the members. Farmers cooperative, as I've talked about farmers cooperatives and governments like farmers cooperative enough a lot because it's easy to reach the farmers. They could call them for a meeting and give them fertilizers that they will now give the different individuals involved in the cooperative. Now, shifts and credits from the name, it's about access to funds. So they pull resources together and the members can easily assess that particular fund to run the business okay now the last type the limited liability company they are defined as legal entity created through state approval and treated as separate from its owners they are divided into two, you have the public and the private now, examples of this could be the ones we already know, some of them. Let's say Fusion Mobile Nigeria Limited. Limited is very key. Fusion Mobile Nigeria Limited is a private company. We also have a Kennedy Lichuku Transport Company and so many others. Public companies are the banks, let's say GT Bank. Zenith Bank. Now, what makes a company public or private? This key is their shares. Now, individuals approach the government and get forms that they want to create a company. Now, creation of the company usually requires a name. They choose a name. A name search is done. And when it's seen that there's no other person in the country using that name, is approved and they're given a certificate. Okay? So the members involved, let's say from two down to up, to up to 50 individuals, can form this private company. And no other person outside this can share in the profits or is a shareholder of the company outside these two to 50. So these two to 50 persons run the company and the company is taken as a legal entity. They can be sued, just the company and not the individuals. Okay. Now the, the documents or information regarding the company is made available just to these persons involved in this business. Their annual profits and details of the business, everything is taken care of by these persons. Now, for a public company, you can easily approach them and buy shares and now become a shareholder. Okay, so that's the difference between public and private. Private belongs to certain individuals, but public is available for the masses. Masses can contribute money and approach this bank. I want to buy shares from a company. So that means at the end of the year, if there are profits, I also get my own profits as an individual. So the profits for public companies, the documents, the running of the activities of the company, everything is made available to the public. Private companies can easily convert to public companies through what is known as IPOs. When you get to commerce or accounts in senior secondary studies, you understand what it takes to move from a public company, a private company, down to a public company okay so that brings us to the end of this chapter click on start quiz and answer all the questions 